Hey, hey, everybody, it's your boy Profchoff. We're back again with another video by Mandalore Gaming. Okay, this this has been requested for a while. Okay, I just it was pretty long. I didn't do it for some reason up till now. So now we're gonna do it. Okay, this is a Pathologic Classic HD review. I was let someone let me know that it might be a little what the fuck is so yes. What the fuck is that midget? Kinda looks like a whale head. Right. <laughs> right, okay. Leave us with that without any explanation, okay. Okay, Mandalore. Where do I even start? I don't know. I'm no stranger to weird games, but this one is up there. Is that explosive diarrhea Where or do is I that even blood? Start? I'm no stranger to weird no games, knows. but this one is up there. This one is really up there. To put it simply, Pathologic is a Russian game released in 2005. Oh, you could have just said it's a Russian game that would explain everything. Just say it's a Russian game. <laughs> it's really up there. To put it simply, Pathologic is a Russian game released in 2005. It garnered a lot of awards in its own country and went mainly unnoticed in the West. There are good reasons for that. For one, the English translation was incomprehensible. Pathologic made I. Oh. There are good reasons for that. For one. Don't wonder its strangeness of my request, please. Don't wonder the strangeness of my... I need a pistol, but without fail with bullets. Or whatever it shoots with. Indeed, with bullets, with bullets. Yes, depends on the situation. It might even happen that your soul is released for penance by means of dry peas. Yes, depends on the situation. It might even happen that your soul is released for penance by means of dry peas. Yes, very sucker. Of you. One, the English translation was incomprehensible. Pathologic made I Divine Cybermancy look like a Marvel movie. But then in 2015, an HD version was announced. It looked promising. Some updated visuals, widescreen support, and best of all, an updated translation. It also restored content that was cut from the English version because the translation was so horrible it was unusable. Not that a lot of people got to that anyways. So that came out, and it still remains obscure. So let's get the game started to find out why. The game opens with a group of kids having a funeral for a doll. It's odd, but not as odd as the in-game play. Our hands are no longer tied. Where are we? Well, the muscular contraction is there. Means you're already inside of him. The musk this must be one of the ventricles right here. What a silly place. These are the three playable characters. Before the games even started, they're arguing over whose method will be best for the job. The music is creepy, and the dialogue and delivery is very... performative? Only a miracle can set us free without us having to destroy something. And I can do miracles. Just let me. Then they do a stage freeze and it's all over. Watching this was optional. You could go to the door to choose a character at any time. Oh. So, you have the Bachelor, Haruspex, and Changeling. You can only play the Changeling after you beat the game oh. with one of the other characters, so I recommend the Bachelor. Time for video games. That's exactly how I wake up in the morning as well. Sleep. Woke. Anyways, you're a Bachelor of Medicine. You've come to a strange town to investigate a claim that a man is centuries old. From the very first second I started playing, it seemed uncomfortable and cramped. There's something strange about this architecture. Even something as mundane as the stairwell seemed really creepy. It's almost like an Escher stairway, like something's off or not real about it. The very first conversation you have with someone feels the same way. The writing is flowery and your first conversation is philosophical. It's almost like you're in a dream and it's reminding me of... Oh no. Yo, the scariest thing here is that this bitch Steedies are weird as hell, look at them. It's like they exist, but not really. You see them? Look at them, that's very weird. That's the that's the most horrible thing so far in this oh. game. You get a map marker to the old man, and then your tutorial. From them. Your first look at the town sure is ominous. Oh, that's not a It's like you're about to be practicing medicine in Silent Hill. Or Morrowind. And that's... These guys also talk to you like you're in a play. Explain correctly. the game's mechanics in the same terms. There's a day-night cycle. Okay. You can miss most of the events. Uh, you want to visit important people, but not the common folk because they're extras. Okay, wait, no, don't dismiss them entirely. Okay, there's some more philosophy discussion, but wait a minute. This is going to be a survival game. 
So I need oh. to figure out the town, meet people, and survive it. No problem. I'm dead. So do I get a game over or... By the way, I have a question. I'm dead. This guy died and he did a... He did a cartwheel. Wow, dying. That is a very dramatic dead body. People Look at this. And survive Look at the it. camera angle. No problem. This. I'm dead. So and do I get dead. a game over or... That's how I want to die. Impressive. Ah, right. I didn't save. Let's try that again. Oof. It turns out you're never gonna meet your man. He was mysteriously murdered. There are strange things happening in a town that's weird enough already. The locals are eerie. They're usually polite, but very like reserved with you. Which is understandable since you're from out of town. So now you're playing Magnum P.I. in a culture a that's utterly kid. alien to you. To make matters worse, rumors are swirling of a sand plague outbreak. You have no idea what the sand plague is, but the locals are terrified of it. Bruh. The investigation plague outbreak. You have no idea what the sand plague is, but the locals are. T I think everyone in this village is re is uh related to each other. I think this might be an Alabama village, if you know what I mean. Look at that dude on the right. I mean, look at the dude on the left as well. I uh, I smell some incest. My nose is very attuned to incest, so I can smell a lot of it. I can smell the hot gunk being expelled from a sister. Wait, from a brother inside of a sister. It'd be weird if it's in from a sister to a brother, but hey, they might have evolved that way. Who knows? Terrified of it. The investigation points to a serial that killer, but sentence. that's when things get complicated. People have ideas on who or what the serial killer could be. Some kind of necromancer? A local woman with a criminal past? What the hell is a step demon? In fact, <laughs> what is this city? What year is this supposed to be? The style of dress is all over the place and everyone sounds so strange. I had a feeling you would come. The mystery keeps building. Yeah, we'll come back to this. To For now I'm going to talk about the presentation. Despite being Not the surprised. HD edition, on a technical level the visuals are subpar. The original game was also considered very ugly for 2005. <laughs> the regular NPCs have no variation. Every wow. mugger uses the very ugly Was that in slow-mo the way he pulled it or was that just dramatic effect? The regular NPCs have no variation. Every mugger uses the exact same model. They're always carrying a knife. Hey, so fighting a group of them is silly. So what is this city where you get mugged by seven people? Okay, what, what kind of city? Is this New York? Are we in New York? Jesus Christ. Like they're all coming out of a clown car. Just the same bull cut bandit over and over again. All of the minor NPCs have a type and they too have no variation. They have a type. Huh. This is every drunk in the game. This is every store owner in the game. This guy? You guessed it. Oh, fuck. It would be nice for there to be minor variation, even change their clothes, unless... Hmm... The fidelity of character models and just about everything else is okay-ish for 2005. That's the best I can say for all the technical stuff. It is dated, but not horribly so. In contrast, the art direction is interesting. Some parts of the town look roughly like post-revolution Russia, but then other parts look like they're from a Mongolian steppe culture. Then you have buildings that combine the styles, you also have buildings that don't fit in at all. What the For example, the giant superstructures throughout the town. They're First just looking. looming over everything. I can understand a town having a big train yard. What's not normal is your town having a giant polyhedron tower on the outskirts. The one that's breaking all physical laws and filled with children. The walls are all made of paper with writing on it. The entire city has a really peculiar taste in artwork. The whole town seems like it's in another dimension. How about these big buildings with no roof and no walls? How does something like this even happen? Wait a minute. Damn you, Cromwell, were you here too? Not to mention all the strange non-human creatures in the town. What they have a unique look. With? The whole art style does. The game builds so much mystery by just looking around. Because they include areas you would expect this place to have. Oh, it's but the strange buildings seem just as important to the city, but you don't know what they're for yet. It doesn't look weird to look weird. There must be a purpose. At the same time, the game's trying to get something else out of you. So let's talk about that second one. Back in the Call of Cthulhu video, I mentioned that some of these older games have an uncanny valley effect. It's when the visuals are dated, but just good looking enough to trick your brain a bit. Pathologic fits neatly into this category. But there's something else off-putting besides the architecture. The colors. The game is drab. When you're exploring, it's very easy for parts of the city to blend together. It doesn't matter the time of day or the weather. Everything starts looking brown or yellow or green or gray. It's ugly and miserable, like a never-ending funeral. Then you combine that with the low foggy draw distance and it's like you're living in a haze. Even on a good day, this place seems awful. 
then things get bad. Really bad. And the only thing you can say is, you know what, Jesus. this seems appropriate. You have an alien culture, everything looks dirty and gross, of course the sky looks like Beijing traffic. The soundscape also seems to be off. You hear muffled sounds like dogs barking and kids crying, but it seems to be right by your ear somehow. A lot of the sound effects, especially the weapon sounds, are very subpar. However, What's the music is a completely different story. Some of it sounds like it's sneaking up on you. I've never heard anything quite like it. It has horns, oh, tribal chants, oh, hopper notes, cow sounds. It's like Genghis Khan made the Half-Life 2 soundtrack. <laughs> a lot of the tracks are very atmospheric and kind of catchy. I wouldn't listen to it in my car, but I enjoy it for what it is. It's the biggest, strongest nail in keeping the game's atmosphere together. It has a very special kind of atmosphere. The kind of atmosphere where you break into a dirty warehouse and fight eight guys who all look like this. And then the music starts playing like a Mongolian trip-hop remix of that song from the Fifth Element. This game is weird. This game is really weird. Oh right, I should talk about the game part. Let's get back to our Bachelor of Medicine. You already lost. Uh. You've changed. Or am I imagining things? I... This game is frequently described as a survival horror game. The emphasis is on survival. There's a lot to manage and do and the clock is always ticking. There are several stats that you need to manage. That's your reputation, hunger. your health, exhaustion, your immunity to the plague, infection. your hunger, your exhaustion, Jesus. and your infection. Health is self-explanatory. Bad man hits you equals no good. Your reputation determines how people treat you. If it's bad, store owners won't trade with you. If oh. it's really bad, city guards and even the townsfolk will try to attack you. Kill them and you lose even more. For example, you could break into someone's house, murder all the residents and their children, and rob them blind, but then people are gonna gossip. That'll just mean more trouble. But you are trying to survive, so things might get desperate. You can increase your reputation by treating or helping the sick. Oh. But if your immunity is not high, then the infected can infect you. So when one's running at you, your instinct might be to kill them before they can infect you, but people don't like that either. You're supposed to help the sick, not shish kebab them. People do like it when you murder all of the muggers. Ah. So you shank them in the dead of night for more stuff and more reputation. But this comes at a risk to your health. There are very few traditional healing items, so it could be better to try and avoid combat. Let the guards handle it. He's gonna serve and protect the hell out of that guy. <laughs> uh oh. And Get healing have... bandages and other specialized items. You have to understand the hobo economy. It's easy. What you do is dig through the garbage cans. Some have treasures like a broken razor blade or an empty bottle. Others have nothing. So whenever you're walking so around town, which game. you'll be doing a lot, check all the trash. Really, you should be dumpster diving at all times. Then you want to is fill your bottles with water. There's a lot of places you can do that. Then you go and talk to the drunks who, for some reason, have all the healing bandages. So now you can trade water bottles for bandages and tourniquets. That's just how it is, or you can get them the other way. Now you could be thinking if melee is so risky, then why not just use guns all the time? No, well, I, I would, but guns are very rare. They also wear down and become less accurate over time, so they need repairs. Ammunition is also rare and expensive. You could go to the Kmart in the bad part of town, but there is a more obvious place to find bullets. Check the school children. They have plenty of ammunition. They sometimes trade for dumpster items, but Excuse all kids are different. Excuse me, what? So it's in America. New York, maybe I was right. Jesus, I've never been so right in my life. Friend, you can scam little girls for antibiotics. Maybe you randomly found a piece of jewelry while walking around. Girls give good drugs and ammo for those. This edgy kid wants your knives. This awkward kid wants your nuts. The art of exploiting children is truly powerful. You always want the hobo economy in mind. Maybe you can find something to trade for little Cindy's Novocaine. You Sounds get food like to manage game. your hunger. Of course, depending on the situation the town is in, the prices for food can change dramatically from day to day. Are you getting a great deal, or will prices drop five times tomorrow? Who knows? For dealing with the plague, there are a lot of immunity drugs you can take. But these usually damage your health and you can overdose. You sleep for exhaustion, but now your hunger is going back up. Some food items might affect your immunity or hunger negatively. Then there's dealing with the plague. If you don't know how to cure it, you can only manage it. For the love of God, do not get infected. It will- Oh God, it's here. You can find gear to increase your protection, find better gear, get your gear broken, get it fixed. It's almost an immersive sim. Almost. The problem is the execution. 
The idea of solving a mystery while maintaining all these stats is great. That's what the last game was about, too. The thing is, the gameplay itself just isn't fun. The combat is very floaty and awkward. It's hard to tell the reach of your weapon. Guns quickly become inaccurate, making the hitboxes seem incorrect. It makes you want to wait until the enemy is right in front of you before firing so you don't waste any of your bullets. The worst by far are the rats because they can give you the plague. Melee with them drove me crazy and it took me a long time before I could reliably kill them that way. You can also sneak around and I honestly have yeah, no idea how that people. system works. I can risk shots here because they'll never see me. The mechanics are there but awkward like it's an early build of it. Sometimes the AI becomes silly, sometimes it just shuts down. When it is working, they mainly charge at you and swing. Even then, it wasn't uncommon for the pathfinding there to go nuts too. It's just not enjoyable. A weapon that might bring variety, like a shotgun, just feels like every other weapon. It doesn't feel like a big step up. That's a shotgun. You are risking a lot in combat, but it's just so poorly done that you don't feel its weight as much. Plus, you can avoid it by just running into a nearby building. Still, this isn't the worst part of the game. Oof. Not even close to it. Here's a good 90% of pathologic. Walking. Fun, huh? We're walking. Oh. Are you guys having fun? Yep, still going. <laughs> What's the wellhead doing? You are going to do so much walking. You might have thought that example was long. I don't think it was long enough. You can't run and drain exhaustion, you just walk. Going through garbage isn't something you do on the side, it's something to do to give you sanity. You take a trash break, back to walking. Trash this is why the game break. has remained so obscure. All this walking. You have 12 days to survive, and each end game day days. is roughly 2 hours. The games I've seen people complain about being walking simulators are usually very short. In my playthrough of The Bachelor, I did a lot of side quests, but not all of them. Do you know how long it took me to beat it? Oof. If you can't get into the story of a game, don't play Pathologic. There's nothing for you here. I don't mean that in a derogatory way. From my perspective, the story is the only possible thing that could keep someone playing this game. Is, is the atmosphere and music great? Absolutely. Can it carry a game that long on its own? No. I'm completely fine there? ignoring everything else in a game if the gameplay is fun. If the story and writing is good, then yeah, I can forgive some things being subpar. This tested my mentality of that to the extreme. I didn't know how to word this. Then this one man summed it up perfectly. Ah, pathologic. Great atmosphere and story propping up gameplay that is slow, boring, and endlessly frustrating. What a terrible game. It's great. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> this game is mundane and slow, it makes Stalker look like a Garuga. But it's really captivated me. That's a good word for it. It's holding me captive to walk down all these roads. I usually only lightly talk about the story in a game, because usually I'm hoping that someone's going to play it themselves and come up with their own conclusion. But this time it's so impenetrable that I'm going to get more into it. I'm not going to talk about spoilers yet, I'll warn you. Back to The Bachelor. Every day you'll have a new main mission, and also side missions. You have an in-game day to complete them. Naturally, your main mission matters the most. The Bachelor has several characters in town who are bound to him. Their survival is crucial for getting the proper ending. If you fail your mission, or don't complete it before the day is over, one of your bound will die. Depending on how far you're into the game, it could be possible to still get the proper ending. Were they significant for things to come? Maybe. I don't want to find out. On the other hand, you can completely ignore the side missions. Unlike most games, these aren't always rewarding. You might end up paying $2,000 out of pocket for something that's not worth it. Some cheap items, and maybe some more background on a character. The side missions could have several outcomes besides failure. Some might give you rare items, some might give you nothing at all. Even if you don't finish them, they are worth looking into. Because there are angles. Every character has an angle. It could be for good, it could be for evil, greed, whatever. The point is that characters will lie to you. Not in a video game fashion like you're gonna get ambushed in some building. Rather, it's the purpose to what you're doing. If you're looking into an event, people will have different details. The truth is in what lines up. You learn there are three powerful families who have been vying for control of the city for years. So then you start to wonder, what's really a part of their culture? Is there really a Shabnak step demon? Or is this their version of a drop bear? Wait, maybe there's a demon? The more you learn about the people, the more you learn how to play them yourself. 
It's possible to fail a main mission and some side quests just by revealing too much in a conversation. If you know enough well, and the timing is right, you can call them out in a lie. When do you play dumb? When do you press the investigation? Not only do you need goals. to figure out a bizarre culture, you also need to figure out how not to get played by the people using it against you. So you have a lot to think over walking around the town. I still think it's far too much thinking time. <laughs> then the plague hits. Now things are even more complicated. Who's really helping you to try and solve the situation? Who's using the plague to make a power play? What supernatural forces are really going on? Every night there's an optional mime performance at the town theater. The thing is, the characters talk about what happened that day and foreshadow possible futures. How can that be possible? Sometimes I understood what these plays were foreshadowing. Honestly, I have a really good feeling about the army coming to town. My gut feeling just tells me that it's gonna be great. Some of the other plays, well, I had no idea what they meant. The game has big twists, but sometimes they twist again. On one day you're playing the thing trying to figure out who might be a shapeshifter. On another you might be out in the wilderness looking for answers. All the walking across town, all the awful fetch quests, yeah, they're still there. They even plot an identical twin logic puzzle at one point. What? It hooked me in hard. Everything that's horrible is still horrible, but I could tolerate it. They even lampshade how slow the game is. This work is neither very time-consuming nor mundane, and it's definitely more than a mere errand. It's a very important mission. It's a marathon of a game. It did give me a lot of answers when I beat it, but even more questions to wonder about. Then I realized that after all of that, the there were two more characters. Yeah. What? After all that walking, all that everything, you want me to do it again? Twice. I mean, what kind of psychopath would actually- Okay, the Herospex is a little different. Dangerous. Unlike the Bachelor, he's from the town. He's returned from studying medicine in the capital. Unfortunately, now he's the town's number one suspect for the murder. Due to being wanted, he starts the game with a very low reputation. Most of the town wants him dead. In fact, there are a lot of events that will make your reputation go down. Take his very first quest, which is to go out into the wilderness and murder a child. He's very much the hard mode character. I'm still not sure why you can play him from the beginning. Your first quest is to go out into the wilderness and murder a child. Yeah, I see why the townspeople think he's the With killer. With your low reputation, you can't trade from the start. That. You do have another option. See, the worm creatures have a very peculiar way of gardening. Worm it involves creatures. human blood. So if you win a fight with somebody and have a sharp object, you can harvest their organs. Coming from the Bachelor, oh, this is an extreme world. change. The hobo economy has now extended into the illegal organ market. In step culture, you have to be born into a certain caste to open up a body. So the organs are really only illegal because people don't like you. Trading right. organs with the worm people for plants is very normal. These are desperate times, so you might have to take desperate measures. I got five kids to feed. Besides healthy organs, you could also get infected organs. The Bachelor had a lot of trouble with that one. You know, cultural law trouble and all that. You can explore around in the wilderness to collect plants. Sometimes you find a hot spot or a trail of them. Usually it's a needle in a haystack. I mean, Jesus Christ. Can uh, I can't pick up that one. Which, which plants can I pick up? I don't know anymore. <laughs> you can find multiple recipes that all make the same thing. Until later. Then you can make cool stuff. This is neat, but I honestly wish they restricted you more. You can still dig through the trash and do other stuff the Bachelor did. The one thing you don't get is a special eyeglass which detects the infection. If you walk slowly, you won't have a problem with that anyways. Wait, did I say walk slowly? Those clouds will chase you. Which you should expect when the cloud is made from screaming human skulls. The biggest distinction is how the characters treat you and the missions. The Bachelor does learn a lot of town lore, but not very deeply. He's very scientific, rational, and set in his ways. Initially, he's wanting to learn about the culture, not learn from it. So of course people don't want to bother. But the Haru Specs is a local, and those who do trust him, really trust him. They reveal things the Bachelor never learned, open with information he struggled to get, admit they're lying to the Bachelor. It's all running in parallel. You're getting a more complete picture of the narrative. You're learning the deeper parts of the town's lore. You participate okay. in their ritual. Why did you kill the hot thought? Mandalore, what the fuck? I was like, can I participate in her lore? I was gonna make the joke and, and he shoots her. ...and sacrifices. Learn about their worship of bulls. Many of the locals believe the whole world rests on the back of a bull. The Bachelor dismissed this stuff, but now you're part of it. Even some of the plays which seemed like nonsense before, now I can get what's going on. You have a new set of bound, and you'll learn more about characters who you barely talked to before. I like you how can even talk to the Bachelor. Half of his, uh people that he can talk with, like half his important people are children. <sighs> bachelor, like the Bachelor talked to you. The parallel narrative is really cool. But everything that was bad before is still bad, and in some cases even worse. Sure, the combat is still Ooh. awful. 
But there's a big so chunk of main missions Ooh, that are nice. filler, tedious, or nice both. Hook. I'll nice. open the door if you bring me 50 vitamin pills. The ones that a shop owner might Jesus. have a dozen of if I'm lucky. The kid might have one to three. How about a dozen or 15? 50. Bring 30 clips of rifle ammo. How about a he went that away quest? Just going around asking where someone is only to end up right in the beginning where you started. Then you have three days of time trial missions. I thought this was already a time trial. There's even an awkward boss fight. It's like they were trying to find ways to stretch it out more than it needed to be. It's like they had ideas of who the Haruspecs should talk to and what about, but they didn't know how to get them from point A to point B, Tried so they just made some stuff up. Body. The thing is, you still go from point A to point B, but wow. now with extra errands. That's some One day something interesting might be happening. Shit. The next day it's a scavenger hunt. A good half of this is really good, but the other half is wasted potential. With all that said and done, I can't talk much about the third character yet. Oh. Without saying too much, it does have interesting ideas, but it feels even more rushed than this was. Oh. Go to that house. Are they bad? Yes or no? Repeat. Hi, doggy. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk spoilers. If you don't want them, go to here. I'll take them. I'll take anything. You really want to stick around for this, huh? I hate walking video games. Alright. The time in town changes The Bachelor. He's just trying to protect these people and find the cure to the plague, but things keep getting in his way. The customs interfering in his research, the rampant corruption, the power games. His hope is that the army might sort things out, but that becomes a slaughter. Even the military has factions breaking it apart. Oof. It's all a mess. He's seen the town go from full of life, to a war zone, to basically empty. He's understandably lost his faith in humanity from this, so what would he have to turn to? Hey, Polyhedron, yes. the impossible structure separated from the town by a river. In the last days of the game, your map will begin to change showing a new angle of the city. It starts to match his investigation of the plague. He finally has it figured out. There is no step demon. The structure was put into the ground deeper than any building before it. The locals made claims that blood would pool around its support spike, but it wasn't blood. It was infected groundwater. The plague comes from the earth below the town. It oh. all makes sense now. And this amazing structure protects the people inside of it from the plague. After everything the town did to the bachelor, there's only one thing that makes sense now. Okay. The army needs to shell this town to the ground. The structure may have inadvertently caused the plague, but we need to keep it. It's a miracle. So the town gets shelled. No more city, but we get the structure. The locals have several subplots that span an intricate web. I'm not going to delve too deeply into those, but instead focus on the main themes of the game. Now our first word of the day is contradiction. So much in the game contradicts each other. In Russia, the game is titled Plague Utopia. The word plague doesn't always refer plague to disease. Utopia. It can just mean destruction or calamity. But a utopia is a perfect yeah. world. Happiness, free for everyone, forever, that kind of thing. So it would be destruction, perfection. How could those complement each other? Hmm, let's look back Sadness, at the game. Happiness. The town is a culture of a nomadic steppe people, but also industrialized. The musical lyrics are very tribal, but most of the instruments are electronic. An infection that destroys all life, but a building that can make your dreams come true. Tradition versus progress. You're a doctor who kills to survive. The game acknowledges it. How can the plague and the structure complement each other? There's an argument that what's been happening is harmony. Some live, some die, that's nature, but now it's taken to an extreme. There are characters who believe what's happening is the road to utopia. They believe the plague to be a physical law, almost like the plague is a kind of Newtonian reaction to the structure being built. A reality-breaking wonder is met with a reality-breaking tragedy. Huh. Well, there is all that theater stuff. The philosophy is summed up like this. There is a top in utopia, but don't let the word deceive you. It's all about what's down below. It requires dirt. There are arguments that it can exist, that it shouldn't uh... exist. Is it really perfect if it's causing suffering too? And that's when I realized, how perfect is it that it's filled with kids? Sure, you can dream of a perfect world as a kid. Then you think about it when you're older and have more life experience. Do you think it's possible for everybody to have a perfect ideal world without anybody else being left out? All right, mm, nope. Merry Christmas, everybody. Okay, so if you didn't pick it up, our second word is utopia. This is starting to feel like a bleak Pee Wee's Playhouse, so I'm not doing the words anymore. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to interpret it. The tower could represent childhood innocence and the town could represent growing up. The infection could be progress drowning out tradition, or vice versa, I don't know. The universal law thing would explain why the buildings and the streets themselves have scabs and signs of sickness on them. The roads in Massachusetts are just like this. <laughs> there are criticisms of lives being viewed as disposable, which is pretty common for Russian games. There is one other big thing I want to touch on. But what about the other character? While his route is kind of blander, he does have some reveals. His map also changes, showing the town resting on a bowl. The cattle processing abattoir has a second purpose, taking the blood from the cattle. They claim to pour it into the veins of the world and they can extract it warm whenever they want. Then it suddenly came to me. Why did the worms need blood for farming? The caste permitted to cut open bodies is related to the one who can dig into the earth. 
Inspired by the Bible, Puritans wanted to build a city upon a hill. Are they feeding the infection or some shit like that? What is happening? In pathologic, maybe, just Brain's maybe, confused. they tried to build it on a bowl. Or the utopia is a bad idea and we're feeding it our children. After investigating and mulling it over, it becomes apparent that the blood beneath the town was poisoned. He can make a cure using special blood from beneath the town, but the disease seems to be coming from the tower. Or it could have been this guy's fault. I don't know. Anyways, he has the exact opposite solution. Destroy the tower and save the town. So you do. The kids love it. It could also be implying technological regression or stagnation, but I'm not sure. So here's the kicker. You need all of your bound to survive. However, you can also heal the bound of other characters. This means sacrificing your rare plague curing items. This is a pain to pull off. If you save the bound of another character, you can choose their ending. And something else more important happens. The powers that be send you a letter inviting you into the polyhedron. What could it mean? Oh, those kids are ugly as fuck. Maybe we should sacrifice them. What's that on the right? Is that... Oh no. Oh god, no. Not after it. all this. Please don't, I beg you. I don't get it. Oh no. Uh, you uh, uh, Look at our oh. magic sandbox. Isn't it crazy? Everything's alive inside of it. Breathe. Keep in mind, you see this after playing it for 20 oh. to 60 hours. This is the big reveal. The town is a magic sandbox. It's a game kids made after a funeral to cope with loss. A funeral for someone who died of the sand plague. Oh, my head. The hero has been deceived. It was vain. It was all in vain. The hero is but a puppet. Wait a minute. This is written like a funny tragedy in a play. It's mocking. There's something to this. Well, I'm already in this deep, and now you are too. They're what happens when you save all of the bound? Okay. Well, the same thing as usual. Except afterwards you get an invitation to the town theater. From the people who executed the whole thing. Time to find out. Sure, you can take my coat. Okay, can you kill these two guys in the beginning of the game then? They seem like the cunts. Wait. Oh my god. These are the stand-ins for the developers. You can argue with them about the game and your role in it. You can ask who they are, but you already know. What? They're a collection of poorly rendered polygons on a screen. Your character may be a toy, but aren't the children who made the town a doll too? They made a mocking it was all a dream ending just to ask you, why would you be mad it's all a dream? You knew from the moment before you even played that it was all made up. A story-driven game can't give you true freedom because, yeah, everything you do is already predetermined, all the variables. You already know that no matter what you play in the back of your mind, but here it's bringing it to the forefront. After being so invested in the game, this blew me away. What a perfect trap. Someone would only play through the misery of this game for the story, and even then they pull the rug out from under you. I hate this, but I really like it. This is stupid, but it's brilliant. Inevitability. Wait, I thought we stopped doing that. Your fate was sealed from the first screen in the game. Inevitability and fate are constant themes through the game. I've seen this theme in a lot of Eastern European games before. It doesn't mean everyone there is sad, it's just a different cultural mindset. And boy, did Pathologic set my mind somewhere. The game constantly saying that it all ends, random characters foreshadowing the god children. It was hammered into you from the start. You just didn't know what it all meant yet. Yet there's still another pressing question. What about the changeling? Gotta play that one. <coughs> Yep, here I am. I know it's all a lie, but I'm still here. <coughs> oh, Path of Logic. So the English title had a meaning too. Anyways, in this fresh hell you play a girl who wakes up in dirt. Your reputation will be falling no matter what, so that's nice. You're a little girl, so the garbage cans look bigger. I, I think that's a positive change. I don't, I don't know. Your hands have magic healing powers, so that helps oh. you get your reputation back up. You can even cure the plague, but you could get infected yourself, so be careful. Of course I can heal you. Come, my son. Feel the power of... Oh. Turns out it might instantly kill sinners. Okay, let me try and heal this sick man then. Nope, okay. He's a sinner. You can only hey. do it on the people with a really, really contagious disease. The town is only a month old. Yeah, I, I know. Good luck in the SCP dungeon. <laughs> the things being revealed now were already revealed by the other two characters. Okay. In fact, I was thinking about those ones more. Maybe the world is supposed to be a bowl, and that's why there are scabs on the ground. The changeling can't use normal weapons, only this special revolver. I diagnose you with dead. I made up a twin sister for the killings, but maybe she's real now? You have a mind power to force people to tell the truth to you, but it's all really minor details at this point. The tower is the dreams of children, etc. There's really not much happening. Oh, I can make the cure to the plague with my hands. 
Wait, wasn't I doing that? I'm thrown off. The polyhedron isn't ideal. Yeah, we know. Tell Volgan that I can save the town and the tower. Now people will need to periodically sacrifice their blood to keep the town and the tower preserved. So there will need to be constant sacrifice to maintain a balance between tradition and progress. Okay, I get it. Our gods are children. Look, man, you gotta believe me. It's, it's all a lie. So the changeling caused the plague but lied about having a sister who can heal, but then the healing sister lied about the changeling being real, which made her real? Yeah, I'm gonna do this again. Guys, what's going on here? Okay, so the changeling is both the protagonist, but also the plague, which is the contradiction, you know. One thing's healing and destroying, and it's all together, but now it's in the character. Hey, look, that's a good question down there. Why changeling? Yes, tell me. Please tell me why I just played this character. Well, initially, we were going to rest content with just the destruction, but then we quickly slapped together a different ending. They didn't plan anything. They were rushed in dev time. Laugh it up. You and Vulgan, just laugh it up. I'm not playing the Void for at least a year. No more weird Russian games for at least a year? Here's my grand finale, my conclusion. Pathologic is about walking around picking up trash. This game is hard, and it's not fun, and it was made with that intention. While I can't quote it verbatim, the developer basically said games can be more than just being fun. They achieved that. I will never forget this game. The story, the setting, and the writing are fantastic. The game has so many interesting ideas. It might also be the most boring and mundane game I've ever Oof. played. It's a... contradiction. At the time of this video, it's ludicrously cheap. If you're interested but don't want to deal with all the walking, I would still encourage you to get it, and here's why. The same developers are working on a complete reimagining of the game. I changing can. and improving the stories of some characters, updating the visuals, and most importantly, cutting down the walking. It has a free demo out called The Marble Nest. Check it out. The thing is, this game is going to be episodic. It was going to be one oh. big game, but then the economic crisis in Russia caused the deal to fall through. The first episode will be about the Haru specs and not The Bachelor. They might not be in trouble, but it's enough to get me worried. Is this one of the developers? And is he in a padded cell? That would explain so much about the game, to be honest. The story of the original game is very similar to Darkwood. Artists turning into game designers. They had to cut a lot. So I'd like to see what they can do when they realize their ideas better. This is a hard game to recommend, and if I did, it would mainly be for The Bachelor. I'm really torn on this. I don't think I can keep a good conscience and tell people to play this. You know what you're in for. So that's the video. See you next year with, uh, good. something. Thanks for watching, and thanks to all the people making this possible. I guess I will end up using that community post thing since when I said I'd only post the updates and the other stuff, people didn't like that. So before the new year I'll post a big thing of plans going forward. Okay, let's do some questions. How did you get a larger than average Eastern European viewer base, Tavarish? I don't know. It might just be more vocal. This was by far the most requested game I had this year, but I had to wait until I had proper time to put into it. And the other one. Have you considered DOS game videos? I've got some ideas. When can best we expect reviews ever. of console games? This upcoming year, well, I have some ideas. Game ever, if the game has a steep long. learning curve, do I try by trial and error or look for some kind of beginner guide? Trial. The last time Oof. I kept using a guide for a video was for Aurora. That game had a bonkers interface, so I kept having to look what up what I was hell? trying to do because I couldn't find it. I think it's still getting ported. Any more game reviews with the series? Yeah, there is one in particular I want to do so I can complain about the remaster. The second game is also good and has a really cool DLC I don't see people talk about much. All right, I'll have more soon. Metro games have a Merry amazing. Christmas. Okay, well, that was pathologic. I'm gonna be honest with you, the story, it sounds fucking amazing. The way, if you watch the spoiler part, you know, it sounds amazing. The gameplay fucking trash though. I don't know, I don't think I can play this game without, you know, losing my mind and actually becoming, you know, a patient in an insane asylum. I don't think I can do it. And anyway, quick thank you to the patrons, Pedro Martinez, Command Score Unit, Robert, Prince, Zaya, Swast, Eric Fuse, Chicken, Mr. Tree, Senior Hilter, Lemon and Moon, Ike, my Dash, Ironic, thank you for the support. Hope you all enjoyed this video, it's been a long time coming. Uh, yeah, have a nice day. Oh yeah, we'll be playing some more wins a bit later today, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, have a nice day, everybody. See ya.